now joining us on the phone is Rabbi Nachim Ganak. He's the Rev of Congregation Sharmir Muna and CEO of the OU and has been named one of the 50 most influential Jewish people in the United States according to the Jewish Daily Forward. Rabbi Ganak serves as the executive on the executive committee of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee and he is a close friend with the Clintons. Rabbi Ganak, are you on? Yes, good talk. Good work, Rabbi Ganak. Just Thank to be you. Clear, Rabbi Ganak is not here in his position. Uh, he's here as an individual. And here at Uro, we are not. We're, 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 we're interviewing people. We're going to talk a little bit about the different uh, presidential candidates. Really, just focusing on Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump. But no one is endorsing anybody uh, from an official capacity. Uro certainly is not endorsing. This is just to kind of hear some different perspectives, talk about a little, open our minds and uh, you know, maybe take some calls to hear what is on people's minds regarding this important election which is facing the country and, and the Jewish people, but not here to endorse any candidate. Right. Okay, Rabbi Ganak, you, um, you, you are a close friend of the Clintons, and just a, a question, how did you form that uh, relationship? And tell us a little bit about the Clintons, as we know Hillary Clinton is running for president. You have a uh, insider view that most of us don't have, and we'd like to just give us a little uh, you know, personal interaction that you've had with them and how this relationship came to fruition? Well, um, the relationship really began initially when Bill Clinton, then was, was then Governor Clinton, was running for, for the president for the Democratic nomination. And I was at an event and I introduced him. And at, at the time I, I said, you know, if you recall, George Bush, uh, the first said there was an article in Time magazine sort of criticizing him about his lack of vision and he's responding to oh that vision thing again and playing on that I when I introduced President then Governor Clinton I said that the Bible tells us in Michele that when there is no vision the people perish and that vision is an essential ingredient of of leadership and he he told me you know he liked the comments that the remarks and he was he was then he had just at that time clinched the uh, nomination. It was clear that he was going to get the nomination. And he said, you know, I'm going to use that in my acceptance speech at the convention. And and he did. And if you feel a call or play it back, you'll see what the, he used it as a rhetorical pivot for the for the speech coming back to it. It became, for at least for the first part of the campaign, the sort of slogan of the campaign where there is no vision, the people perish. And from that, um, we became friends. He used to invite me off into the White House, and we began a correspondence about Tanakh, about the Bible. You know, Bill Clinton's a Southern Baptist, but he's extremely familiar with, with the Bible. Um, and we had this correspondence. I got other people to write as well, and ultimately I published it as a book, Letters to President Clinton, and I published both his letters in response, and he wrote the forward to the book. Oh wow, that's amazing! Did you actually believe that he would say it at the at, at his speech, or you thought he? Well, was when just... he first told me, I wasn't sure whether he was joshing, but then he sent me tickets to the convention, and uh, and yeah, I was happy to hear it. You're, so you're a seasoned uh, a veteran in these matters. Uh, could you have predicted the, this whole new political whirlwind that's going on? And could 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 you give us a little bit of your understanding of of, of just the there's an earthquake. Um, um, out there of what's going on, and, and did you see this coming? I think it was extraordinarily unpredictable. Um, one would have thought, um, both on the Republican and on the Democratic side, you know, that Sanders would have been still in the race um, and that he rep would have represented a movement and a force, I think, was astonishing. And they must add, I think, a very unfortunate negative um, development, especially for Israel, and uh, and also the the advent of Trump. I think when I heard his speech initially, his introduction, I thought he was going nowhere, and the Republicans had, I thought, a very deep bench between Jeb Bush and and Rubio, and you know Cruz, Kasich. Those are all serious candidates, and that. Trump would have ended up with the nomination, I think, was unpredictable. But the route between the two, um, the common denominator, is a sense of, um, of anger, concern, especially amongst young people, 
dislocation in the economy and and the sense that uh, people are, you know, uh, young people are concerned about the um, what, what kind of jobs they can get. So, so that anger sort of bubbled up both in the Republican and the Democratic side to, you know, to, to in terms of these two candidacies, both Sanders and Trump. So my, my question is, on the, uh, and I'll, I'm going to ask this to everyone who comes on, on the show tonight about on the political angle, is our Jewish political establishment, meaning the people um, like yourself and others who are in this field, you know, um, 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 most of a guy like me or others, we're just armchair quarterbacks. We don't necessarily understand, you know, all the implications, but, but it, the, is our political Jewish establishment missing what the establishment um, um, of the Republican and the Democratic parties um, missed? And if we are, are we, are we going to, uh, uh, so to speak, pivot and move and try to get the feeling of what's going on? Because ultimately, this uh, anger or feeling has to um, 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 infiltrate, so to speak, our circles as well. Well, I, I would say this, that I think there's a reason let's say, speaking about the pro-Israel community, there's, I think there's reason on both parties for real concern um, in this respect. I mean, we know that within studies shown with the, the Republican Party, or at least its constituency prior to this, were pretty solidly pro-Israel. There was strong, strong erosion within the Democratic Party. We saw a, 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 you know, a siren to it in terms of the last convention when when the Jerusalem plank was booed, though it was booed actually not by delegates, but other people who were present, but it was still a warning sign. And, um, and so that's a real concern. Sanders has picked that up. You know, it's terribly ironic that the only candidate running for president from the beginning of this, uh, you know, primary season who was anti-Israel is, is a Jew. But um, that's something that we have to be concerned about um, because we can't afford that Israel become a partisan issue. It has to be bipartisan with support from both sides. And we have to be careful, you know, to try to develop those relationships on both sides of the aisle in support of Israel. But I, I want to hasten to add, even on the Republican side, you know, the, the, these Pew studies have shown that, you know, the, the, one of the core areas of support, the anchors of support within the Republican Party have been evangelicals back to Jerry Falwell and before. And, and studies have shown that their children, the next generation, are not committed to the same ideological, both on social issues and other, and other political issues, as, the, uh, as their parents. And, and within that community also, there, there could be a shift in terms of support for Israel. And that's, and you, and I'm not speaking about Israel now, but that evangelicals voted for, you know, for... Donald Trump, who, you know, on his face is not, wouldn't be the poster child for an evangelical candidate or for support for him, shows this kind of a shift. Um, as I said, it's rooted in this kind of, of concern and, and, and anger and, um, you know, the, the crushing of the middle class, all of those things. But it has implications for Israel as well, and we have to be sensitive to it and build relationships in lots of different communities especially in the emerging Hispanic community, which continues to grow, and, um, and amongst young people. So it, it's something that we have to be sensitive to. Rabbi Ganak, it's uh, Rav Wai, Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem, Shalom. Uh, you know, it's reassuring to us that we have somebody of your uh, Torah caliber that is out there to be able to make a Kiddush Shem Shemayim in this arena. Uh, may you be zeichet to continue to do so and represent us properly.